All right, guys, so we got to start off the day with some great news, okay? Some news that's right up my alley, right? We have some financial news to talk about that is related to the culture war, okay? And woke capitalism, which in my opinion, you know, I've talked about this a lot. Um, that is the main issue that we're seeing in regards to these companies going woke and pushing progressive slash woke values on the american people values that we simply just do not accept now the reason why they're doing this in my opinion is because they believe that conservatives older conservatives in particular uh they are retiring okay and eventually they're gonna die out and they're gonna pass down their wealth to the younger generation the younger generation is far more liberal far more progressive that's why they're referred to as the target demographic okay and a lot of these companies want to appeal to these younger consumers because they know that these younger consumers are inheriting wealth and yes i know there'll be some people in the comment section to say well no it's actually generation x we're the ones that's inheriting the wealth right well yeah that's partially true okay but millennials and generation z they're inheriting a lot of money too and again this is what these companies see and this is why they're going woke okay they're going woke because it's no secret in the financial services industry that we are in the middle of the greatest transfer of wealth in the history of this country from baby boomers to the younger generation okay we're talking about estimates of about 70 plus trillion dollars in assets that are going to be passed down that again woke corporate america they want a piece of okay they're fighting over it. okay they're groveling over it, right um so again in my opinion that's my thesis for why i believe a lot of these companies are going woke okay and that's what they're trying to do now the counter to woke capitalism okay is anti-woke capitalism okay which means that we have to build a parallel economy to show these woke corporations that maybe just maybe they're thinking a little bit too far ahead into the future and they're forgetting about today and today's consumer and the values that we have today in this country and maybe just maybe that is a big mistake at the very least it's created a massive market opportunity that this new anti-woke amazon competitor is taking advantage of a company called public square that has just gone public and again this is a big 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 deal because if we want to fight back against woke capitalism we have to create our own economy in order to do it okay and that is what is happening here with this conservative company that has gone public and is actually truly amazing to see a lot of the momentum behind this company i mean just pay attention to this news clip of jim kramer getting visibly upset during the ipo uh of this company and the opening trading day as uh usa chance uh broke out as this company officially went public it's truly an amazing thing to behold take a look mortgage increases i mean oh. yeah so pretty amazing moment there right you have patriotic americans celebrating anti-woke capitalism right which again i think is a huge 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 opportunity that again i wish right that i had got in on okay but regardless okay um anti-woke capitalism what we have here is a conservative alternative to amazon that hosts uh, businesses that have conservative values values that align with 
uh, traditional values that made this country great in the first place. And I want to go ahead and play a clip from a couple of the uh, founders of this company, okay, and the CEO, uh, so you guys get a better understanding of what this company does, because I, I do think it's important to give uh, some attention and a spotlight to a company like this that, in my opinion, could be a major disruptor and an attractive investment opportunity in the long term, potentially. Take a look. We've built this incredible ecosystem, this large cohort of Americans, consumers and businesses that feel unheard and left alone. What's going to be exciting is to be able to continue to add to our features, jump into new lines of product. So we've actually learned what this cohort of consumers is looking for. Now we get to actually go create those D2C products and sell them back into our marketplace so that we can be this all-encompassing solution for this patriotic economy. I, I think this has gotten bigger and bigger mm -hmm. little by little. The that people want to spend their money where they believe uh, there are shared values. Mm -hmm. They want to spend their money and they want to buy products knowing that they're buying it from a company that agrees with the way they see That's the world. Is that what this is about, Omi? 100%. So to me, in the beginning, it was somewhat of a theoretical thesis, right? I saw that it was accepted that half the country was being ignored, right? Every day you'd see Anheuser-Busch, Target, Disney, Ben and Jerry's offend people but all we saw were boycotts. We also realized that this cohort had a lot of money behind it. Just the people that voted for Trump represent 30% of American GDP. That's $7 trillion that was not only being ignored, but alienated. The next step, though, was if we gave them choice, would they adopt it? I'm happy to say they have. In less than 12 months, this company already has over 1.1 million registered users. Huge. Okay, that's huge. And they did that faster than Twitter, Airbnb and Spotify. That's Facebook level growth. Uh, and I think it shows that people want this. They just needed a solution. Well, the numbers show it, obviously, yeah. in terms of the re registration. Mm -hmm. But I want to know what you're seeing on a product level, mm -hmm. Michael, because, hey, look, I got a delivery the other day. Somebody sent me a whole host of beers. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> only drink beer in America by companies that are patriotic on the whole Bud Light uh, controversy. But, I mean, you're seeing the need and the desire of people to want to just align with the companies that they agree with. Increasingly, from beer to what? So, t give me the products that are on Public Square. Well, that's the most exciting part is that there's not many products now that aren't represented on our platform. So, if you're looking for beer and you've been upset at what's been happening with Bud Light and some of these major companies turning against us. What's really neat is that there was an 800% increase in searches for beer on our platform and people are finding local brewers, people that you can feel proud of supporting because you know that they're not going to stand opposed to your classic American values. And on top of that, household products have really led the way in retail. Our average consumer on the platform is a middle-aged mom someone who cares deeply about the future of their family and of their community, and they make over 70% of purchases for daily households. So for them to be able to come here, especially after the Target fiasco, and know with blessed assurance that they're funding companies that don't stand opposed to their worldview, not only for them, but for their kids and their grandkids, that means the world. And people know that they're able to put their money where their values are, and they feel good about their purchases again, which I, is really what we want. I love what- Yeah, so you've seen that, you heard that, okay? Basically, again, in a nutshell, is like a marketplace for businesses that have, um, you know, traditional American values, okay, that are anti-woke, okay, that don't want to push progressive and woke values down their customers' throats. Um, and it's a place for customers who want to buy from companies who do believe in these traditional American values and who don't want woke that's pushed down their throats, okay? So if you're looking for products uh, that... Uh, have these values that you believe in, then, hey, maybe this is the place to go if you're looking for alternatives. Now, here's the thing. In full disclosure, okay, uh, I have not bought any shares of the um, company yet. Uh, so I gained nothing out of this, right? But at some point, I will buy some shares, just not right now because it's too volatile, okay? As you can see, uh, today it opened up, um, it's already down 20%. However, over the last five days, uh, it's been up 149%, okay? So as you can see, there's a lot of volatility here in regards to this stock. And I don't like buying companies right out the IPO because I, I would rather wait till the stock kind of settles down when it comes to trading and then uh, enter at an attractive moment, okay? Because 
I like more stability in my growth, right? I don't like, you know, things going up and down too much, okay? That's why I have Bitcoin, right? If I wanted more volatility, I'll buy more Bitcoin. But uh, again, this is different, okay? So there's not that much that we know about this company yet. They have signed a deal with Tucker Carlson to advertise on his new show. Um, and where it goes in the future long term, I have no clue, right? I have no clue at all uh, if it will be successful. However, I will take a stab at it, uh, again, when the stock settles down. Just because, again, I just want to put my money where my mouth is and say, hey, look, I, I believe in this. You know, I want to support uh, companies that are anti-woke. I want to push back against woke capitalism. And again, I think the best way to do that is with anti-woke capitalism. So it's not investment advice, right? I'm just telling you what I'm thinking, okay? And that's it, okay? Not investment advice, okay? Um, but again, one of the reasons why I, I think it could be worth taking a stab at is because one of the best investments that I ever made in college was in uh, Shopify, right? Back uh, in 2015, 2016-ish, um, I didn't do a lot of partying and drinking, right? Like my friends were doing and everybody else in college. I actually spent a whole lot of time uh, driving Uber, okay? Because I wanted to make the money. And I took that money and I invested it in Shopify because I thought that the platform uh, was an amazing platform for entrepreneurs to start e-commerce businesses. And I believed in it and I was like, okay, you know, this is a cool e-commerce startup. I can buy it. Okay. And I put all, basically all my money that I made in Uber into, um, Shopify. And as you can see back, you know, in 2015, 2016 ish, it was only, you know, two or $3 a share, uh, in today's dollars because they had a stock split, which, you know, back then the cost of the stock per share was a lot higher than it is. But, you know, I'm just saying, as you can see, the company grew exponentially. I think I sold it probably, a couple years later, a few years later, maybe back in 2019 or something like that, you know, as you can see, it, it grew exponentially, right? One of the best investments I ever made, okay, uh, was Shopify. And I'm so glad I didn't spend most of my time partying in college my last few years. I actually spent it on the weekends, you know, Ubering and trying to, you know, make money or whatever. Um, and that included investing. So all that is to say is that, hey, you know, this company could go bust. Maybe in the long term, the conservative marketplace is just not there, right? Who knows? I don't know. Uh, but with these e-commerce companies, there is a lot of potential for growth. Right now, the market cap of Public Square is only like $500 million. Shopify is at like $83 billion today, right? So again, there's growth potential there, okay? I'm not saying it's going to be the next Shopify or the next Amazon or whatever. I don't know. I'm just saying that, you know, it could be worth taking a look at if you want to, again, put your money where your values are, okay, to counter woke capitalism. Again, there's a lot of small businesses up there that, that are very interesting, very unique. I will be buying from those companies as well, too, to support them when I'm looking for products um, because I believe in it. Um, so, you know, hey, who knows? Okay, it can be successful. It can be not successful, but regardless, I'm happy that it's happening. And just make sure that whatever you do, you know, uh, you're diversified, right? You don't put all of your eggs in one basket, you know. And, um, you know, for me personally, um, I'm excited about it because, you know, it does give me an opportunity to uh, support the values that I believe in. And I think that this is what we have to do. We have to create and support a parallel economy uh, instead of just whining and complaining, we have to put money in companies that are standing up for what we believe in. I think that that's the answer, in my opinion. So let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.